Organic farming is steadily increasing. That's good. Pour parler d'agriculture et d'Europe à la jeunesse. Le climatwandel erfasst immer weitere Teile der Welt. Farmers help us bring nature back and preserve biodiversity. Ceux qui sont dans le rouge s'en sortent quand ils font plus vert. La qualité dans ce pays, elle doit être là pour tous. Hola, mi nombre es Luis Campos. Yo soy Hello, my name is Luis Campos. I am a coffee producer from Costa Rica. We're in the hills in the south of San Ramon, in a small village around which is the main coffee growing part of the region. My family and I have been producing coffee here for 35 years, together with my brother. For the past seven years, we've been fortunate to work with a partner. We process all our coffee, all of our partners' coffee, and the coffee of 250 producers from two regions of the country, San Ramon and Santos. We buy the fruit from them and carry out the entire processing process, classification, packaging and export, directly from our processing plant. The coffee here is so special because, in addition to producing it in a certain way, with a quality of nutrition and careful planting, we carry out three processing techniques. There's the café lavado, which is a traditional process. We have an anaerobic fermentation process that I invented in 2006. And three years ago, I invented a thermal fermentation process. They are unique processes and highly sought after by coffee roasters throughout the world. Luis exports his coffee all over the world. And for the past 10 years, he's benefited from the EU Central America Free Trade Agreement. The most important social and economic impact of our coffee trading relationship with Europe is that we have total price traceability from the roaster, who is the one who buys the coffee from us back to the producer. So the specialty producer now knows that he can have better prices, better conditions to continue producing, because he has a client in Europe who values his work and pays him for it, and he receives what he deserves. One of the roasteries in Europe to which Luis exports his coffee is Ore Coffee in Belgium, run by husband and wife team Tom and Catherine. In the past 10 years, the European market has really opened to specialty coffees. We have an open window, a door, through which we can access this market, thanks to Tom and Catherine, who were among the first to present this opportunity in the European market to our company. And for our coffee to be among those exclusive and special coffees they sell is, for us, very important. Because this market is growing, and it's grown throughout that time. Don Luis is a renowned innovator in the world of coffee, as you'll have gathered from what he was saying about his coffee a moment ago. His willingness to experiment by pioneering techniques such as anaerobic processing and thermal fermentation increases the value and reputation of his coffee in export markets. We asked him about how he sees the future. Bueno, pa futuro. Well, if we're talking about my future and the future of my company, we need to strengthen our existing relationships. There are strong relationships, but they must be strengthened day by day. We must be very careful with our processes and quality standards. I believe that this is a question of trust and that you have to be very, very demanding. I, for one, am always on top of what's going on because I have to understand the needs of my clients. From the mountains of Costa Rica to a cafe in the shadow of the European Commission's headquarters in Brussels. 
Luis's coffee has traveled 9,000 kilometers. Caramel, noisette, spéculoos, vanille, oui. Emporté sur place Emporté. And does it travel well? Yes, uh, because what is particular about this coffee, it's, it's a very specific process invented by Luis Campos, an aerobic process. Due to the process, it develops natural cinnamon-ish flavors and apple flavors. So if you uh, will taste the coffee, it's like a apple pie that you're drinking. <laughs> That's Catherine Powells from Ore Coffee, whom Luis mentioned earlier. Costa Rica is one of three Central American countries where Ore Coffee buys directly from growers. With OR, um, we decided to start to buy direct. And in 2015, we traveled to Costa Rica. You go there, you visit five, six, seven, eight producers or cooperatives. And by accident, Louis was one of those that we visited. And there is a lot of objective criteria that you have to check on, like how do they work, what quality do they have. But then in coffee, and I know it's very different from other business, there is a lot of relationship-based things to consider as well, and trust, confidence. The beans that end up one day here in Antwerp, in the harbour, they don't have a stamp. I mean, so you need to be sure that the quality you agree on, that that will be the quality that arrives here a few months later. So for us, we will never ever start working with someone, even though the coffee is delicious when you're there, but if the gut feeling is telling us to go for it. And so that was the case with Louis. Of course, Catherine wants to provide her customers with the best coffee. But she also feels a commitment to her growers and a belief that direct trade doesn't mean so much without an appreciation of the human factor behind it. We also buy directly in Honduras um, and we have started there with a cooperative, a very young cooperative. So there is still a lot of knowledge that should be gained in that young uh, group of people. Uh, we bought from them the first time in 2019, just before Covid, and uh, everything went well and the year after there was a quality issue. Now. In most of the cases, when there is a quality issue, you might say, OK, buy, sorry, we will buy from someone else. Uh, but here, that's a young guy, and we know that there is a lot of potential. I knew someone who is um, working coffee in Colombia, and she specialized in everything that is processing coffee. So uh, this year, in February, I uh, took her to Honduras, and we did actually one week uh, intense workshop with them to go into the process from A to Z. Okay, it's an investment, but for us it's important because we can achieve better quality, but also for them because they can better the quality. And so it's not only that it's serving us, but the whole community. Thanks to Katrine Powells from Or Coffee. And, of course, Luis Campos. Now, the journey we portrayed there from bean to barista takes place, as I mentioned a little earlier, in the framework of the EU-Central America Free Trade Agreement. This year marks the 10th anniversary of that agreement. As well as Costa Rica and Honduras, it covers El Salvador, Nicaragua, Panama and Guatemala. Guatemala is the largest economy of these six countries, and the making of this programme coincides with a visit to Brussels of a delegation from the Guatemalan Chamber of Agriculture, Camagro, and a reception in their honour. I'm joined now by Camagro's executive director, Carla Caballeros, and Luis Carazo Jiménez, who heads the unit for the Americas in the European Commission's DG Agri. Luis, first to you, how would you characterize these 10 years since the agreement came into being? I think it is a big success. 
If we think about the situation in the Central American countries some 30 years ago, they were suffering war, starvation, hardship. It was very important in that time for the Union to consider how to support the development of those countries. And when we look back at the accomplishments of these 10 years, we can note, for instance, that the trade has doubled and that we are getting closer to our friends and colleagues in Central America. So I think it's a big result. Carla, what has the FTA meant for producers in Central America? Well, the agreement, it's been very um, successful. It has expanded opportunities for not only for exporters, but also for a lot of SMEs, companies that are uh, being integrated into export supply chains. Companies have taken advantage of getting their products into the EU market, but also that we do have more availability as consumers of products from both sides. Luis, there's a broader political objective of the FTA for the European Union, isn't there? Absolutely. I think there are two main elements that we can highlight here. On the one hand, there is a push towards a further regional integration. The European Union is an excellent example of regional integration, and by having an agreement with Central America, we are fostering this. Second element is the idea of fostering the dialogue and the exchanges. We have uh, annual meetings with our partners in Central America, and this is paving the way for uh, improving our mutual understanding and getting closer in our rules and in our standards. In your view, Carla, how successful has the FTA been in promoting regional integration in Central America? We're working on that. And Central America is a world-class exporter and is among the first five suppliers in the world in some products such as coffee, cardamom, cane sugar, bananas, pineapples. We have success stories to tell like uh, in terms of uh, sustainable agricultural practices that we were already uh, implementing before, even before the agreement, because we have producers where products are competing in the world markets. Luis, how important to the EU are higher social and environmental standards in agricultural production in the region? We are not intending to impose our standards because uh, here we are talking about a region in the world that is sovereign, but we are intending to serve like a benchmark or a reference showing why we in the European Union have come to the conclusion that certain rules or the standards are the best to be put in place and we are making the effort to explain our colleagues in Central America about the benefits of our own standards. Carla, how successfully do you feel producers have adjusted to the standards that EU regulators and consumers expect? In the case of Guatemala, more than 70% of our uh, energy comes from renewable uh, sources. And uh, out of that, the total contribution of the agricultural sector uh, to the energy production is around 32% that comes from the sugarcane baguettes. Uh, and, and that's that's a strategy, that's a business model that the Sugarcane Producers Association has been promoting. The SASWA has been very successful, not only to um, contribute to the sustainable goals of the country, but also to contribute to the uh, objectives of the agreement as well. What's your hope for this agreement for the next 10 years, Luis? I hope that if the last 10 years have been a big success, I think that we can be confident that this success will be pursued and increase over time because uh, all the elements are there. Uh, the good results that we have achieved in the last 10 years is the best argument for both parties to keep working together for the future for the sake of the populations in Central America and in the European Union. Carla, what more are you looking for from the Commission as we move forward? Well, we're hoping for uh, the Commission to recognise that we should be in the middle of all, all of the discussions regarding the um, Green Deal. We totally uh, agree that um, agriculture has to contribute, but our producers in the country are already in compliance with that. Either they are um, environmental policies, either they are um, labour compliance policies, or child prevention policies or human rights uh, respect policies. Well, thank you both very much for your insight and congratulations on the first decade of this landmark accord. That brings us to the end of this edition of Food for Europe. Thanks to all our guests for a fascinating view of trade between the EU and Central America. 
and all the opportunities it can bring to economies, societies and people. Time now for a coffee. So, until next time, bon appétit. Organic farming is steadily increasing. That's good. Pour parler d'agriculture et d'Europe à la jeunesse. Le climat wandel erfasst immer weitere Teile der Welt. Farmers help us bring nature back and preserve biodiversity. Ceux qui sont dans le rouge s'en sortent quand ils font plus vert. La qualité dans ce pays, elle doit être là pour tous. 